this is the most simple, stupid way to write charge, but it'll get you through the night. Hey, how's it going? I'm Will Hunt, born in Gainesville, Florida, and uh, now living in Orlando, Florida. Current band is, uh, there's three. There's uh, Evanescence, of course, White Noise Out, and a band called Rival City. I play drums, I play bass, I play guitar, little piano, and sing. My forte, let's see. Um, interesting because we were talking about that. I was talking about that with some other people, and I kind of, I'm a pocket player, I'm a groove guy, heavy groove powerful, um, quick little blasts, but it's really more about rock and roll and just a really good vibe, vibe and groove for me. That's definitely my forte. <laughs> Let's see, I play, proudly play Pearl Drums. I'm using the new Pearl Reference Pure series, which is amazing. Um, I'm a Zildjian endorser, have been with them since I was a kid. Um, it's a combination between the, uh, the heavy A line and the new S line, which is phenomenal. It's a really uh, good price point on those cymbals, and they're dur durable, and they sound amazing. And then also uh, Vader sticks um, and Remo heads. I'm doing the uh, Emperor X on the snare top, uh, and Emperor, clear Emperors on the toms, and Power Stroke threes on the kicks. First drummer I knew by name. Uh, wow, that's a tough one. I don't know, this is weird, but Peter Chris, I think that might be the first guy. <laughs> ah, definitely a student. Um, I took private lessons for many years and um, also played in, you know, the high school band for a little bit, but that wasn't my thing. Um, but definitely took lessons. I don't know, it's just one of those things that you, uh, you feel and you love it and you either, it either grows with you uh, and you grow into it or you move on. So I think it kind of chooses you. <laughs> well, you give up a lot of personal time, you know, you give up a lot of family time, you give up, you know, like I would have gone to college out of high school, but you know, that I, I wanted to try being a professional drummer first and still doing that 25 years later. <laughs> well, obviously Kiss, you know, that was really more about the show and the flair and all that kind of stuff. But also as I dug into it, you know, there's some really good songs there. And Peter Chris back in the day, I think that he wrote some really great parts. A lot of people would disagree with that, but I, I think that he did. Uh, but then I also, I really love Led Zeppelin, obviously um, very much into the police and Stuart Copeland. Uh, I love that guy's hi-hat work and his cymbal work. It's just so awesome. And then, um, I mean, you know, Alex Van Halen, some Steve Gadd, I listen to a lot of Steely Dan, I listen to a lot of Earth, Wind & Fire, that's where some funk and groove comes from. Um, but all the way through to like Slayer, Dave Lombardo, stuff like that, you know, just anything that's really powerful. Obviously Tommy Lee, a huge influence for me. Yeah, I would say that the day that I got the gig being Tommy Lee's drummer kind of changed things for me because I had a band that was on RCA and we were just kind of making it into the I would say, you know, the recording and touring world professionally. Um, and then when I got that, and I, you know, people kind of knew who I was, but, you know, not really. And then um, when I got that gig with Tommy, all of a sudden people really knew who I was. And it kind of was like, you know, uh, that guy's Tommy Lee's drummer, so he must not suck. <laughs> Man, I draw inspiration from just walking down the street. Um, like for example, like today, somebody stole all my sticks, so I drew inspiration and broke my kick drum head. Ah, uh, better being a better musician, you know, not just a better drummer, but a better musician. For me, my end game is to be a great drummer that plays for the song and plays to entertain people. And so I'm constantly working on those things. And there's a lot of components to that, you know, from learning how to write better songs write better drum parts, perform better for the audience. Um, those are the things, and then also being, you know, just being a better human being. Dream gig? I would, playing a Kiss would be pretty cool. I played in Motley Crue for a little bit. I filled in for Tommy Lee, so I did that. That's, chalk that one off the bucket list. Led Zeppelin wouldn't suck either. <laughs>
Oh man, that's a tough one. Uh, life motto. Life motto is um, I don't know. Just kind of more of a Buddhist approach, you know. Don't suck. <laughs> Just be cool. <laughs> Add to the world. Don't take from it. So yes, this is Will Hunt. <laughs> Hello. Thank you for taking the time. My pleasure. We are at the Musikmesse in Frankfurt, and Will is. Um, Rocking the crowds, <laughs> the small crowds. Doing something. <laughs> and uh, breaking bass drum heads. <laughs> <laughs> Amongst other things. <laughs> yeah, he's a real rock star. And um, I didn't have you on my drummer's map. Um, sorry about that, but now I have you on my map, and many bands have you on their map. Yes. And some bands have called you um, to, to stop and come in last minute. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's so, been interesting. Yeah. yeah. So you must be a quick learner. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah you could you could say that. <laughs> I have a, a capacity for remembering rhythm. That, that's just a talent. I, it has to be of yeah. some sorts. And you are good at writing out flow charts. I think. Yeah, you have to kind of you have to learn that process. Mm -hmm. I think it's different for everybody. But did, did you learn it, or do you just came up with your own way? I've seen a couple of people's notes going in and out of sessions. Maybe somebody just left something on a music stand that they had, and maybe not even necessarily a drummer. You know, it could be a guitar player, horn player, whatever. And I've just kind of, over the years, taken those examples and kind of, you kind of have to find what works for you because, you know, it's one thing when you've got time to practice and you make the chart and you're practicing. It's another thing when you don't have time to practice mm -hmm. and you have to follow that in a live setting in front of a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And I think the difference between a drummer or a guitar player is if a guitar player drops apart, you know, the train doesn't stop. Mm -hmm. But if the drummer drops apart, you know, the train stops. Mm -hmm. And then it's really bad, mm -hmm. very ugly. Mm -hmm. So I think you have to write charts in a way that um, are very easy to read, very clear. And um, if all else fails, there's a simple common denominator so maybe you don't play the fill exactly the same maybe you don't um, play two crashes at the same you know on eighth notes you just play one but you get through it mm -hmm. and then you know as I would say after you get one gig under your belt it's a lot easier to finesse everything mm -hmm. so for me I just take it like you know intro right you know in a sharpie piece of paper I have a piece of paper <laughs> It's, um, it's especially made for you. It's yeah. the signature paper, or what do you call it? It's for the signing session. Yes, yeah, signing session. Poster. A poster. Yeah. And, um, Get maybe, that framed. Yes. So we can use this and you can uh, show us <laughs> okay. how you do song. Do you have a song in mind, maybe? Wow. Yeah, I can do, I can do What You Want by Evanescence. So you would count out the bars. You know, it's like the intro is do da da do da so on the floor tom's in the snare. So you'd be like one, two, three. Tedious. Four, two, three, four, two, three, four. So basically, you know that you've got 16 bars of an intro, right? So I do 16 bar tom snare intro. And so since there's not a stop, it goes right into the song. I draw an arrow. That means keep going. That you're not stopping. So in the intro groove, it's actually the chorus groove, and you kind of once you listen through the song, you pick these things out, right? So I know that that intro groove is going to go eight bars. Eight bar. Chorus groove. And then I know that I don't stop again. I go to the verse. So now I'm in the verse groove, right? Now, you can finesse this because there's certain little things that you come up. I try. What I try to do is I try to pick out the big, focus on the big beat and focus on the big fills. The ones that intro a chorus, the ones that intro a, uh, a bridge, the ones that, you know, the punches that everybody's on together. I try to strip it down to that. Because I, if I only have 18 hours to learn the set, I don't have enough time to finesse all the little nuances. So I have to get the big things, hop in, knock that first night out, get everybody through it. Then I can start finessing it. And then, of course, the band will have comments. They always do. As they should, and it, that's how I do it. So it's not flawless, but it works. So I get through 
chorus groove. And I go to the verse, right? Got an eight bar. Verse. And then I make little notes if I need to if I need to make them. So then I do one half, right? That way I know that it's the same kick pattern as this, but I'm switching to the hat. No stops. We have, actually, if I'm thinking about this, because I'm not listening to the song, that's four. We've got an eight bar pre, hat, ride, sixteenths. And I know that I'm playing sixteenths on the hat and the ride, like this. So you see, and this is the most simple, stupid way to write charge, but it'll get you through the night, <laughs> right? Now look, there's a big punch coming here. There's not a stop to do this. Eighth. Wait, sorry, quarter notes actually, sorry. Let's see. And then you go back and you, you refine this. You make it neater, because <laughs> you can't look at all that crap in the show. <laughs> so you do um, double, big punch. So I know that's bah, bah, two punches, right? Don't stop, right to the chorus. And now we have 16 bar chorus. Now back to that groove, right? Mm -hmm. I do mid chorus, snare, fill, 16 All right, so I know that I've got in the middle of that, in the middle of that chorus. Right? Right? Sixteenths. Two count. Now, if you wanted to, you could chart all this out, right? Mm -hmm. you could make notes, you could do notations like that. For me, number one, my eyesight's bad, and I'm not wearing glasses when I'm playing, or contacts. So it's hard for me to see that, unless I've got it right in my face. And the other thing is I don't want to make the audience feel like I'm reading it. I want them to not notice the difference that, hey, that's not the regular guy. I want them to feel comfortable with me too, because then that kind of takes away from their experience. So if I write it like this, I'm able to keep this hidden from people. I'm able to keep this down here near my hat, and I'm able to just kind of cycle back and look at it, you know? And so that's just an example of how I do it, you know? Mm -hmm. That's pretty much it. I know that looks like like doctor's writing. That's the simplest way to do it, man. I'm not saying don't learn how to read music, but that works for me. Cool, if it works for you, it hey. also might work uh, for you. Yeah, Try it. It might work for anybody. Try when you get a call next time and only have eight hours or so to prepare. Because yeah, that's all you're going to be able to do. Yes. You know, unless you're an amazing uh, reader and songwriter. Yeah. So thank you very much, yeah, Will. My pleasure. Pleasure to meet Good you. To meet you. Yeah. Um, Try to see Will Hunt uh, live. He's in Italy quite often. I am in Italy. I'm doing a tour there with my band there, with um, BGH tour. It's the uh, bass player and guitar player from Bosco. We're doing that this summer, and I'll be in uh, all over Europe with Evanescence this summer. And then um, I've got two new bands coming out, Rival City, and then another band called White Noise Out with new material coming out any day now. Check that stuff out. Okay, lots of opportunities. Okay, great. Yes. Thank you, and bye. <laughs> Thank you.